Yeah, greetings my fellow freedom lovers and sovereign thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date is Friday, December 2nd, 2016. Yes, it's cloudy. It's getting a little drizzly, rainy. Inconsistently, I would say. You know, has waves. But, um, hey, this is how it goes. Still warm down here, my good grief. Come on, I want that cold front to come down and make it 50 degrees and everyone will be bundling up. Go, oh my goodness, it's so cold out down here, outside. But I enjoy it. It's usually something like that. And that was a particular temperature. I'll be on the beach getting a suntan. And I lived here for almost 40 years, so go figure that one out, right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, of course... You, you're going to be people nitpicking on Donald Trump. I've been checking all those areas out. And even some people in this cabinet, including the defense secretary, may be appointing pretty controversial, I would say. So um, the pros and cons, my friend, you have to expect that is all part of the human element. But whatever you do, you have to put their feet to the fire. That's the name of the game. Don't just sit back and go, oh, I'm going to trust this man. You can never do that, regardless who's in the office elected governmental position okay so i'll just be i say that out of fairness and in good faith well this um let's just do a couple things here. yeah i'm at a supermarket you hear people cast just registering and all that and people just mingling in the background which is cool i could i can dig that and people eating around me which is fine too reading their magazines and you know what why not have a show in here i like to do this once in a while all right let's just Speaking of politics, gonna do a few articles and something else you can say controversial, okay? And um, this one's here is mainly about the Anti Semitism Awareness Act. All right, it was introduced a couple days ago. It's by the Intercept. So we'll start with here with the Intercept.com, as this is by Alex Evans. Is, Entitled a Senate Response to Trump Inspired Anti Semitism by Targeting Students Who Criticize Israel. <gasps> oh my goodness, how dare you criticize that country? Something to think about. It's like, so if you can't criticize the government, what's going to be, if you can't criticize the government of Israel, what's going to be next? Something to really contemplate. But we'll check this out. As it reads here, after Donald Trump's election emboldened white supremacists, and inspired a wave of anti-Semitic hate incidents across the country. The Senate on Thursday took action by passing a bill aimed at limiting the free speech rights of college students who express support for Palestinians. <gasps> How dare you support that particular group? Oh my goodness! Continue on. By unanimous consent, the Senate quietly passed the so-called Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. Only two days after it was introduced by Senator Bob Casey, Democrat from Pennsylvania, and Tim Scott, Republican from South Carolina. Yes, remember they say, elephants and asses screwing the masses. I will proceed. A draft bill obtained by the Intercept encourages the Department of Education to use the State Department's broad, widely criticized definition of anti-Semitism when investigating schools. The definition from a 2010 memo includes the example of anti-Semitism, delegitimizing Israel, demonizing Israel, applying double standards to Israel, and focusing on Israel only for peace or human rights investigations. Critics have pointed out that those are political, not racist positions shared by a significant number of Jews and qualified as protected speech under the First Amendment of the Constitution. According to the draft, the bill does not adopt the definition as a formal legal standard. It only directs the State Department to take into consideration. Assumption, assumption, kind of sort of the way to go. The definition when investigating schools for anti-Semitic discrimination under Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. The memo's definition, which is widely supported by Israeli advocacy groups, was intended for identifying anti-Semitic groups overseas. Even then, it came with kavits. Criticisms of Israel are only examples of possible anti-Semitism, taking into account the overall context. And the memo concludes, however, 
criticism of Israel similar to that level against any other country cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. <laughs> oh, man. Attempts to adopt the definition as standard for campus censorship has drawn criticism from civil rights groups, free speech advocates, newspapers, and hundreds of academics, and even one of the definition's crafters who wrote a column last year arguing it should not be applied to campuses. The bill approved by the Senate on Thursday was supported by the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, the Jewish Federation of North America, and the Indian Defamation League. Hooray! More New World Order garbage supporting the cause. Can you see the bigger picture? The definition will have a severe chilling effect on campuses, and that is an explicit goal of Israel advocacy organizations who promote it, said Liz Jackson, Jackson, an attorney with group with the group Palestine Palestine Legal. Student activists for Palestine Palestinian rights already operated in a repressive environment. If this bill passes, they will face a specter of federal investigation simply for engaging in criticism of the Israeli government's abusive p- policies. The campus activities are being subject to an increasingly broad censorship effort by Israeli allied groups. Each year, Palestinian legal documents hundreds of instances of obstruction, censorship, or punishment of pro-Palestinian activism at colleges and universities. In December 2015, for example, one student at George Washington University was ordered by campus police to remove a Palestinian flag from her window and threatened with further disciplinary action. At other campuses, students have been suspended or threatening with expulsion for demonstrating against Israeli occupation of the West Bank. The University of Illinois in 2014 fired a tenure track professor for tweeting about Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Filing complaints with the Department of Education has been favored tactics of groups including Zion, Zionist Organizations of America and the Brandeis, Brandeis Center, which have written letters to the department alleging, alleging that events like demonstrations and film screenings amount to harassment or intimidation and created a hostile environment on the basis of national origin for Jewish students on campus. The Department of Education has investigated and dismissed four such cases against UC Irving, UC Santa Cruz, UC Berkeley, and Rutgers University, ruling that robust and discordant expression is expected to be expected on a college campus and that the events described does not constitute actionable harassment. The investigations nonetheless amount to public relations victories for Israeli advocacy groups who can circulate articles on how pro-Palestinian activities are under investigation for anti-Semitism, while the activists have to deal with months-long burden of being under government investigation. Civil rights groups are confident that if the Department of Education actually did use the State Department standards, the court would quickly find it unconstitutional. If the Department of Education were to enforce this definition by restricting student speech critical of Israel, it will violate the First Amendment, says Jackson. The right to criticize a government, the U.S., Israeli, or any other government, is enshrined constitutional freedom in our country. The Senate can't legislate that any way. Jewish groups opposed to the Israeli occupation of the West Bank were quick to denounce the bill. Instead of fighting the anti-Semitism entering the White House, this bill will go after 19-year-old students carrying protest signs against human rights abuses, says Tali Ben Daniel, academic program manager for the Jewish Voice for Peace. In a statement, this is not how to fight anti-Semitism. This is a recipe for restricting civil liberties, like the right to criticize the government for its policies. It is unclear when the, when the House will consider a counterpart bill. I say, shut this damn bill down. Plain and simple. The question is this: so if people, so if so if these people, these advocates, Israeli pro, like uh, Israeli organizations, like the NDF mission and all that, don't like people that support Palestinians' rights. Are are that are you are they anti-Semitic? Absolutely, as far as I'm concerned, it's a double a double standards. I would say. However, I'm going to keep continue on here. It says here on a, on Reason.com proposed 
Anti-Semitism Awareness Act is an unconstitutional mess. This is by Anthony L. Fisher. This came out yesterday. And it says here the bill, the, the bipartisan Senate bill will make judging Israel by double standard a hate crime. Bob Casey, defense of the court, Bob Casey and Senator Tim Scott have introduced the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, which according to a statement on Casey's website is meant to ensure the U.S. Department of Education has the necessary statutory tools that are disposed to investigate any Jewish incidences on college campuses. Citing a FBI report start stating over half of all reported hate crimes in 2015 were on an anti-Semitic nature. The senators claim their bill is necessary to provide the DOE with the firm guidance it needs to determine which constitutes anti-Semitism. Seemingly shoehorned into the end of the senator's statement is this line. The act is not meant to infringe on any individual right protected under the First Amendment of the Constitution. That's a relief because someone's reading the details of the bill who possesses a basic understanding of constitutionally protected speech would likely see it differently. Although prosecuting offensive ideas and retrograde view, views as hate crimes doesn't eradicate bigotry, but merely as a, as a component of vengeance and contribute to identify identity tribalism. The bill's in inclusion of calling for aiding or justifying the kill or harming of Jews is difficult to argue against, although killing for and aiding the killing or harming anyone is already illegal, which is legit. Makes sense, right? The bill's, bill's definition of anti-Semitism is directly called from a 2010 State Department memo, which University of California Broad of Regents considered adapting as official policy before ultimately agreeing to a softer condemnation of anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic forms of anti-Zionism. When does Zionism and Judaism are the same? They're two separate entities. All right, I'm going to continue on here. But not a blank ban on an anti-Zionist expression itself. There also was also a push by New York State lawmakers to ban anti-Zionist speech on a city university of New York campuses but died in the legislature before it could be voted on. Unfortunately, the bill also proposes the following examples of hate crimes, accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggeration the Holocaust, demonizing Israel by blaming it all for interreligious or political tensions. <coughs> Judge Israel by a double standard that one would not apply to any other demo democratic action nation. While holding such a view is stupid and objectionable, Holocaust denial is legal in the United States. Likewise, political, politically demonizing Israel and unfairly holding Israel to a double standard are thankfully legal, just as a pro-Israel speaker expressed an opinion on blaming the Talmud of the Talmud in the Middle East or Arab Muslims would be. That's how free speech works. The government doesn't get to judge the validity of thought, no matter how offensive it is to certain sensibilities. And that's true. It's, it's just totally, you know, totally mind-boggling. And, um, and of course, it's just, as far as I'm concerned, you can criticize whoever you want. Okay? As long as you got merit, that's, you know, make yourself look good, back it up. Because even if a person like myself, I, I'm a big diehard activist, but I, I, I go out there and speak my mind. But I want to lay down the facts. I'm mostly family oriented too, so I'm not going to use any egregious conduct, misconduct, okay? Yeah, I may ask them, like before, how does it feel being a bend over Bob to the New World Order, you know? That's great, because people, I get people laughing when I make those particular statements. Well, on the contrary, this is totally wrong and unacceptable. And this is why we use the 10th Amendment to tell them to hell with this law. It's null and void in our state if, they, if Washington likes it or not. 
So what I'm going to be doing here, I want to be reading this. I didn't have an actual number for it at the time, but um, it's a Senate version of this bill. And it says here, to provide consideration of a definition of anti-Semitism for law enforcement of federal anti-discrimination laws concerning education programs or activities be enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. And there's a title, short title. This act may be cited as the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2016. Section 2 findings. Congress makes the following findings. One, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 referred to the section as Title VI is one of the principal and discrimination uh, statutes enforced by the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights. Two, Title VI prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, or national origin. Three, both Department of Justice and the Department of Education have properly concluded that Title VI prohibits discrimination against Jews, Muslims, Sikhs, Sikhs, and members of other religious groups when discrimination is based on the group's actual or perceived shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics or when the discrimination is based on actual or perceived citizenship or residence in a country whose residents shall share a dominant religion or distinct religious identity. Four, September 8, 2010, a letter from Assistant Attorney General Thomas E. Perez to the Secretary for Civil Rights, Rosalind H. Ali, stated that although Title VI does not prohibit discrimination on the basis of religious discrimination against Jews, Muslim Sikhs, and members of other groups violates Title VI when that discrimination is based on the group's actual or perceived shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics. Five, to assist and lo state and local educational agencies and schools in their efforts to comply with federal law, the Department of Education periodically issues Dear Colleagues letter. On a number of occasions, these letters set forth the Department of Education's interpretation of the statutory and regulatory obligations of schools under Title VI. Six, on September 13, 20, 2004, Department of Education issued a Dear Colleague letter regarding the obligations of schools, including colleges under the, the Title VI to address incidences involving religious discrimination. The 2004 letter specifically notes that since the attacks of September 11, 2001, OCR has received complaints of race and national origin harassment commingled with aspects of religious discriminations against Arab Muslims, Sikhs, and Jewish students. Seven, uh, and uh, October 26, 2010, dear colleague letter issued by a Department of Education stated, while Title VI does not cover discrimination, based on solely on religions, groups that face discrimination on the basis of actual or perceived shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics may not be denied protection under Title VI on the ground that they also share a common faith. These principles apply not just to Jewish students, but also to students from any discrete Ooh, discrete religious groups that shares or is perceived to share ancestry or ethnic characteristics, e.g. Muslims or Sheikhs. Eight, anti-Semitism remains a persistent, disturbing problem in elementary and secondary schools and on college campuses. So they be so saying here the federal government wants to be the nanny of these things. Yeah, I'll continue on. Nine, Jewish students are being threatened, harassed, or intimidated in their schools, including on their campuses on the basis of their shared ancestry or ethnic characteristics, including through harassing conduct that creates a hostile environment so severe, persuasive, or persistent, <coughs> so as to interfere with or limit some students' ability to participate in or benefit from services, activities, 
or opportunities of offered by schools. 10, the 2010 Dear Colleague letter cautioned schools that they must take prompt and effective steps reasonably calculated to end the harassment, eliminate any hostile environment, and it affects prevent the harassment from recurring, but did not provide guidance or current on current manifestation of anti-Semitism, including discriminatory anti-Semitic conduct that is couched as anti-Israel or anti-Zionist. Eleven, the definitions and examples referred into paragraphs one to sec, uh, uh, of section three have been valuable tools to identify contemporary manifestation of anti-Semitism and includes useful examples of discriminatory anti-Israel conduct that crosses the line into anti-Semitism. I just don't. It's, it's, it's like it's like a song and dance here. Awareness of this definition of anti-Semitism will increase understanding of the parameters of contemporary anti-Jewish conduct and will assist the Department of Education in determining whether an investigation of anti-Semitism under Title VI is warranted. Here are the definitions. Section 3. For the purpose of this act, the term definition of anti-Semitism. One, includes the definition of anti-Semitism set forth by a special envoy to monitor and, cam- and combat anti-Semitism on the State Department of State and in a fact sheet on June 10th, 8th, 2010, as adopted from Working Definition of Anti-Semitism of European Monitoring Center on Racism, Xenophobia, now as the European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights. See, what? European Union Agency? Sounds like globalism 101 to me, my friends. I will say here, two includes, and two includes the examples set forth under headings, contemporary examples of anti-Semitism, and what anti-Semitism relative to Israel of the, fa- Israel of the fact sheet. Section 4, the construction for Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, in reviewing, investigating, or deciding whether there is a violation of the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on the basis of race, color, or national origin based on an individual's actual or perceived shared Jewish ancestry or Jewish ethnic characteristics, the Department of Education shall take into consideration the definition of anti-Semitism as part of the department's assessment of whether the alleged practice was motivated by any Semitic intent. Section 5. Nothing in this act or amendment made this act shall be construed to diminish or infringe upon any right protected under the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. It's, so, it's giving you, this whole bill is giving you a song and dance. There's already stuff in the books already. So how does this make sense? To me, it's a it's like a thought criminal, a thought crime. You may say something, and they assume you are against my people, and this is totally ludicrous. It's something you have to really contemplate. What's going to be next? I recommend everyone calling the house. Go. This bill is it's like toilet paper. Wipe your butt on it and. Shred it into oblivion. It's nothing against the Israeli people at all. Yeah, government, I'm real critical with their government. Before you guys say I'm anti Semitic, if someone podcasts my show, download my show, and send it to the campuses, you're going to go, Get that Loki Lock the Third, get that guy Craig. He's offended, my, hurts my feelings. All these sensitive folks. You know, but if you're going to go around harassing, going up to people's faces because of their of their creed, national background, etc. Yeah, then then you're looking for trouble. I'm not going to argue with that at all. But if you're real critical of a country's actions, and they're going to they may want to investigate you, it's nothing more than a monumental deception, thought crime, 1984 Orwellian style environment. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to say hell no to this bill. It's nothing more than a waste of energy and a total distraction. Hopefully, you know, people can um, 
understand where I'm coming from. Because a lot of people I know who are Jewish by faith respect them dearly. And there's times I have uh, shared stuff. I, I share stuff on my Facebook, Twitter page, and all that on No Guns for Jews and how there's really uh, the Jewish people in Palestine got crapped on, deprived by their by the government during a time when the British ruled them. They cannot allow to have own firearms, but will they protect them? It's like it's like actually actually something like that. The government's giving them the middle finger. And you know what? I condemn that too. Everyone has the right for self defense. Everyone has the right to speak their minds. Whatever you do have merit, back it up. So, well, this is this here, nothing more than a crock of crap. And I'm going to end it with that. Okay, cool. So, um, I'm going to be back in a moment, so stick around.